of the deal, how to turn nothing into something. Now, guys, Kim Barrett here from Your Social Voice, The Art of the Deal, something that Don Rue and I talk about a lot. Uh, <laughs> so what I want to talk to you guys about today is how you can leverage things, because in business, there is a myth that needs to be debunked, which is that you have to hand over cash for services. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have to pay for services, but what a lot of people think is that the only way to pay for it is with money. When in reality, there's time, there's energy, there's effort, and there's uh, something that I really like to do, which is a contra, which is a uh, swap of services as well. Now, first off, I have to debunk that myth that you have to only use cash because for so many businesses, they actually have sometimes a lack of cash. They might be resource rich, they might be product rich, but they have a low cash flow. And they don't really take into account the other ways in which they can operate, the other ways in which they can position their services to help them get even better results. Now, you know, what is the art of the deal? Well, ultimately what you need to come up with is something that works for both parties. For you to be able to shift from using cash to using other resources, it has to be something that is a win-win scenario. Right, every deal in business should be like this anyway. It should never be a lose lose or a win lose. Obviously, lose lose, no one wants to do, but a win lose should be equitable and fair on both parts. And I'll tell you guys a few stories about that and how we've been able to do that also. Now, to start off with, like I mentioned, it needs to be win win. And what I think is the easiest and most, most equitable, fair way to look at things is go, well, what is the retail value? of both parties, what they want to put forward, and how can you come to some agreements of it, right? And I'll share with you a few things that we've looked at and done over time, and it might give you some ideas on what you could do also. Now, am I saying that you should always do this? No, because sometimes it will devalue your service to someone that would actually purchase it. But in other times, it may be something where you do have a good product or service that someone else wants, and you are also needing their product or service, and you can come to an arrangement that's the art of the deal. So for example, some of the ones that we've looked at and we've done previously is, uh, obviously you may have seen the one how I got a free car. Obviously free, I didn't pay cash is what I mean there. Uh, we got a uh, new dividing wall here in my office just off to the uh, right of the camera is a, I'll show it this way, <laughs> um, is a uh, dividing wall that we got done, right? And that was done for us um, in a contra of services. Then we also got that tinted. Right, we got sorry not tinted. We got it uh, frosted, which was done by a, a contra of services. We've had uh, cleaning done for the same thing. Uh, we've just done a deal with someone who's helping us get on more podcasts in return for our services. Now, in in favor of the services that we received, we've always done a tremendous deal for both parties. We've always done something where we want to ensure that both parties get the most benefit out of it. Because as I said, it needs to be a win-win. So on every case, as much as possible, we looked at how can we do this in position of where the other party gets a tremendous deal, right? So for example, with the car, if you've gone back and watched that video, what we actually ended up doing was swapping um, some funnels and websites, uh, membership sites for the products and services that we've um, then basically got ourselves to, to do a deal with them. And that's how both times I've also had a, we got a um, X trail uh, start of last year and a, um, a Range Rover this year, right? That's how we were able to do and structure these deals. Because also the biggest point that I would recommend for most people to take, because not, I'm not saying that if you just start thinking like this, you're going to get all this free stuff or you're going to be able to get all these complimentary services. It comes down to number one, knowing what you want and knowing what value you provide and then being willing to ask for it. Like a lot of people laughed at me when I put up a post saying that I wanted to get a free Range Rover. Right? But I put in there that I, I could go and pay for it in cash, but I choose not to. And I would like to offer, I have the offering of these things. I can do this, 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 this. Same for, and then obviously we're able to strike a deal. I had to do something outside of what I would normally do, but we're able to strike a deal up. When we got our petitioning done, same thing. I had to know what I wanted to get and then also what I could provide. And I asked them, hey, what do you have for this? And we were able to do an exchange of services there also. Same for when we did the um, the frosting and the the glazing on our windows and all that sort of stuff. We did exactly the same process each and every time, but also leveraging our ability to ask and leveraging our ability knowing what we have and what we have available. And most of the time, I'm willing to go a little bit over. I'm willing to give that little bit extra to people purely because they are helping me out. So like I said, most recently what we've done is I wanna get on podcasts, looking to do five podcasts, um, so three podcasts a week for the entirety of the year. 
So I enlisted the help of someone who works with podcasts. And they'd actually reached out to me recently going, hey, tell us a bit more about what you're doing with Facebook ads. We need some help there. Now they were running it themselves. They weren't looking to get it done for them or anything like that. So I said, let's do a deal, right? The art of the deal, let's do an exchange. Um, and they actually offered and said, hey, if we get you a book on podca- booked on podcast, we show you a process so your team can do it for you, would you be willing to look over our ads and do that as an exchange for us? And I said, of course, I'm looking to get on podcasts. My team's getting me on a few, but we wanna really scale and improve that. Let's make a deal, which we're able to do. But as I said, it has to be fair, it has to be equitable. Now, I'm not saying that you should go through your business life, you should go through everything looking to get things for free. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying that is sometimes it can be a beneficial part on both parties. Now, most of the time we will just pay for things, right? We need things done around the office, we'll just pay for it. But on the odd occasion, when we look at things or opportunities come up, we always look to see, hey, can we do a deal here? Can we do a uh, positioning of our services? Can we do something where we help you, you help us? Because as small businesses, and really in this, if you're doing under $10 million a year turnover, I consider that to still to be a small business we sometimes need help, right? And sometimes it's in the best benefit for us to not have to exchange cash, not have to take that money out of the cash flow, but we can work a few extra hours, we can allocate a few resources to helping get that same outcome. Or if you're similar to us as well, where we have digital products, like our online training programs and things like that, we can leverage them, we've already created, we've done the hard work, we can leverage them in an exchange of services to really help um, other people and then also be able to help us as well. Because as I said, it needs to be a win-win. Now, if you can do that, you can start to identify what things within your business that would be suitable for. And normally it's a big, if you have a high ticket product or service, it's generally going to be some of the big ticket things that you need can also help people on the other side. But you have to be willing to adjust. You have to be willing to adapt because exactly what you're looking to offer may not be suitable. Right, I know that happened for me when um, we looked at what we're gonna do for uh, the car that we were able to do the deal that we were able to do there, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to offer to start off with because that was already done. But I didn't go into it with any expectation. I went into it going, what do you need? Where are you at? What help could I provide you? You know what I want. They knew I wanted um, a car. And I said, what do you want? Ideally, we we brainstormed, we had a bit of a a chat about it and we're able to come up with something that would work for them. So that's what you really need to think about is going and going, look, I know what I need, but I'm going to be open, willing to adapt, willing to move, shift and change based on what they want as well. Because it's not all about us. As I said, win-win is the ideal scenario here. And that's what we really need to focus on. So I would encourage you guys to take a little bit of time and think about this as an exercise. What are some of the more expensive products or services and things that number one, you have offered, list them out on one side and number two, what are the things that you need at the moment for business growth? And then potentially see, are there other businesses, small businesses that we might be able to do some sort of deal with where we can help each other here? And if so, then I always recommend like the easiest way to do it um, depends on your relationship, your ability, but is to have a call with them and go, hey, I'm looking for this. This is what I need. I can do all these things. Yes, I could pay cash, but I'm about businesses helping businesses. Let's see if we can come to some sort of arrangement, see if someone else needs that product or service and then put it out there. And look, I, um, I can't take uh, credit for this. I know that um, there are many people that have done this before. And one of the big ones where I originally saw the idea and it popped into my head was uh, from Jay Abraham. So Jay Abraham, I love all of his stuff. He is literally a legend. And what I saw was I saw him do an email out talking about how he wanted to get a new car, right? So again, not many ideas these days are super original. I did it in a different way, but he sent an email out to his database, mentioned what people had done before. They'd given him uh, Ferraris, this, 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 all these different things. So from that, he was then able to go and generate interest, told people what had happened before, showed what he was able to then do and provide, and then a deal was able to be structured. Again, a win-win. So guys, hopefully that has been helpful for you today. If you like this video, please tap like, comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video, how much you enjoyed it. And as always, subscribe so that you can see this first before anyone else. Until next time, I am Kim Barrett. Y'all have been awesome. We'll see you soon.